Well, good afternoon. Um, I think it's a difficult start after just what you heard, uh, what Monique Desar did and what happened this week. But um, let's, pay, let's talk about a game, making something funny, playfulness. You see the ball here, lying here, this soccer ball. I think you remember or recognize the colors. I think they're also from a famous soccer team here in the neighborhood. Um, the fun of a serious business game, that's what I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to give, make you a promise. And the promise is that after my talk, you will have a tool, a tool to unleash the entrepreneur and the full potential of all your employees or colleagues of yourself starting Monday. But first, <clears throat> I want to take you back in some time a couple of years ago. I worked at Heinsberg, so I'm not only coming from Amsterdam to Limburg, but I also crossed the border to Heinsberg, near Ruhrmont. And I was responsible for an industry park. So that's the park of industry. And we supply there electricity, gas, steam, all kinds of services. We even have the fire department. And one day there came an international company to us. And they said, we want to settle at your park. And I cannot mention the name, but it was a big international company. And it was very interesting, of course. You know, that makes you proud. But that company had certain requirements, and we had to fulfill those requirements. But it was quite difficult to do that. And after two weeks, three weeks, the client said, well, mm, it takes too long. I'm sorry, but I'm not deciding for your industry park. I'm going somewhere else. And then you lose a game. And it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice for yourself. It doesn't feel nice for your employees. And it also doesn't feel nice for your clients at your park, because you see them every day. So that gives a nasty feeling. You know, you lose a client. You feel rejected. Now let me, talk, let me introduce you to Martin, our assistant facility manager. Now I know there's a facility manager here in the audience, and I won't point him out to you, but let's talk about Martin. We had old buildings at our industry park, so they had to be maintained. And Martin was the guy that worked from nine to five, reliable, did a perfect job, was a little bit firm guy, had a great appetite at lunch, moustache, glasses. And when he said something, it was always spot on, but with a lot of humor. And Martin retired. And a couple of weeks later, after the client had rejected us, I was introduced to his farewell party, retirement party. And there I noticed that he was already 20 years chairman of a sports club. And I was like, why don't I know that? Because he could do much more. So that was the first encounter, so to say. Secondly, I found out during that party that he already knew eight people who could have helped us to get those requirements for those clients. And I was really stunned. I was angry. I was embarrassed. Why, why don't we know that? You know, this person, assistant facility manager, manager, why don't we know those kind of things? So, thinking about it, so, well, how great would it be that we would know all these kind of things from our colleagues or employees? What they do, what is their intrinsic motivation? But it's, it's very difficult, because I already had problems to remember the birthdays. I had to put them in my agenda. So you cannot know everything from everybody. So you have to turn it around. So you have to be open and transparent to your colleagues about the challenges your organization is facing. So what would it be wonderful if everyone could contribute to the organization because if Martin knew what we were trying to do, and he would say, hey, I know some guys who can help you, and I'm not saying that we would, this client would come to us, or settle that, that, that he would come to us, but it would definitely give him a good feeling that he, hey, I tried to contribute. I tried to help. So, how can we do that? How can we change that? Imagine there are two teams 
two soccer teams playing football or soccer. And one team is winning and one team is losing. Now raise your hands if you want to be part of the losing team. Raise your hand. No one? Yeah, you see an opportunity there. Very good, very good. Now raise your hand if you want to be part of a winning team. Here you go. So actually we all want to be a winner. We want to win. That's something in our, in our genes. So what does it take to win? Well, there are about 8.4 million people winning every weekend. Because they're doing sport. As a team sport. As an individual, but also a team sport. They try to accomplish something. They don't want to have that nasty feeling when they lose. They want to win. They want to feel good. So what does it take to win? Well, you train. And these guys get a lot of money paid to make these funny moves on a, on a soccer field. You know, but it is about training. And it's individual, as an individual you train, but also as a team. And you try to be physical, you try to be better. But on the other hand, you're also much more creative. Because you know the rules of the game, you try to play with them. You're, you're, there's a piece of innovation, because you try new technologies, new materials to improve, to be better than your opponent. So that's about training, or that's about winning. So how do you know that you win? You keep score. And you can only measure that by using numbers. Well, that's scary, numbers, hmm. But if you don't measure, you cannot improve. There's a playing time, you keep score, you know how to improve, how do you can do it better. And there's a third part, celebrate. Well, we're Dutch, we know how to make a party. Even when we're on the third or second place, we still throw a party, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's get serious about that. So, if you combine that, <clears throat> we train, get better, improve. Creative, innovation, we combine those parts together. Secondly, we keep score. We play with the numbers. We set goals. Because if there's no goal, you cannot score. You know, Johan Cruijff said that. If there's no goal, you cannot score. Well, that's quite simple. And you can measure and improve yourself. And third, celebrate. Be proud. The third half of a soccer game at the bar, drinking a couple of beers. So, <clears throat> looking at that, it's something amazing what's happening in our brain. Because in the weekend, we're using our left and our right side of our brain. Our left side, numbers, coordination, structure. The right side, creativity, party. So we use that in the weekend. Our brain is 100% used. Now, if you look in the weekend, what do we do with the rest of the week? There are about 7.2 million people working each week. Of the 8.4, what I showed before. Would they want to win every week? Because they spend five days a week, 40 hours, for 40 years at work. Don't they want to win? Because they're part of the 8.4 million that want to win in the weekend. And these people, these 7.2 million people, go to work, come home, and what do they do? They start training for the weekend. Because there's the intrinsic motivation. So how do we tackle that? How do we, can we improve that? 30% of the people, of the employees, know the strategy of a company, the goal of a company. So when you say the 7.2 million people who want to go to work every day, of course they want to win. But are they able to win? Well, look at this number. If you only know 30% of the employees know what the direction is of the company and what the goal is of the company. Imagine a soccer team, 30% know what, what the goal is. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine Tour de France. <laughs> Where are we going to Paris? If only 30% know that. What kind of chaos would that be? And, and this is a no, low number. But what about this number? 
18% of the people say, well, at work I can fully use all my knowledge, all my know-how, all my experience. 82% go to work, do their job. Aren't we wasting a lot of things? It's unbelievable. And there are companies saying that, well, our employees are our biggest asset. Yeah, well, 18%. How sustainable are you when you're saying like this? 30% don't know the strategy. So one of the two next to you knows the strategy of the company. So why can't we do, change that and make a game out of it? And put the playfulness in the weekend into the five-day work week. So we're much more engaged, much more fun. Playfulness, as I said. And remember, <clears throat> Martin, as I told you about Martin, he's not in this 18%, he's in the 82%. Using all the knowledge of the people, of your own employees. And I shouldn't say employees because it should be partners, team players, because you're playing as a team. So how can we change that? Well, let's go to the training. And I mean not training like real training top down. No, it's about learning, it's about teaching the people how the games are in a business. What are the business rules? How can they learn from that? How can they play with those rules to improve? Not as a company only, but also as a person. Align the goals of the company, align the drivers of the employees. Combine them. It's not them against them. It's us together. That makes it so strong. Secondly, keep score. Put a goal. Set a goal for your employees. That is really fascinating. That they say, hey, that's where I want to go. That's fun. Let's try that. And let them set their own goal. Because there's a funny thing about people. When they set their own goal, they want to achieve it. But when their boss says, well, we have to do this, this, yeah, why? You know, why? Simon Simic at the beginning. We forget to explain the why. But if they can set their own goal, they will achieve it. And they measure it. And how can we improve? And they discuss with each other. Because a number is just a number, and it's about the stories behind the number. That makes it important. The people start communicating. How can we improve it? How can we do it better? And not against them, but we, together to try to achieve that goal. Third, celebrate. Well, if we achieve that goal, we go for a barbecue, we go bowling, we make a trip. But let the employees say what they want to do. They achieved it, not management. Management is only responsible for the budget. But the employees fill in what they want to do. So you play a game. Like in the weekend, you transfer it now to the week. Now I made you this promise that it would come back to give you a tool how you're going to do that on Monday. So you can think about it over the weekend. So what is the most important critical thing to do for my organization, for my company, what I want to achieve in the next month or three months? Don't say a year, because a year is too far away. People lose concentration. Practice shows that three months is a good period of time. So think about, what could that be? Ah, I see already some numbers here and there coming up. So maybe you also notice the number here around in this building. Have you seen that number? Eight. Anyone more than eight? Or <laughs> so what did it do with you? You saw that number eight hanging there? Eight percent, eight euro, eight weeks, eight clients, eight TEDx. Well, I'm number eight now as a speaker. So that's not my critical success number, but it's a number. And there's something mysterious about numbers. People start focusing on numbers. They ask questions about it. What does it mean? What can we do? So the tool I'm giving you now is think about over the weekend, what is the most critical thing you want to do for the next three months? So you get your critical success number. 
And it's not that easy, because it's a number that's a higher number. And on Monday, you put it on a piece of paper, or a lot of pieces of papers, and you hang it around your office. You have a coffee machine, the toilet, cafeteria, wherever you want to do it. And you wait. You wait a little longer until this bus is going on. What is this number? What does he mean? 8% more uh, salary? <laughs> Eight more holidays? And after you cannot wait any longer, then you get everybody together. And you explain what the number is. And you tell why, like Simon Simon said. Why is it so important for the organization? Then you say, okay, we're going to play it for this long period of time, and we're going to measure it. And you say, well, I want everybody to be into this number. And how can we reach this number? How can we achieve this number? And when we achieve this number, then we go celebrating it. And when you did this first number, think about the second number you want to achieve, and the third number. And that's how you unleash all the potential of your employees. Unleash the entrepreneur inside of every employee. So, I wish you a great game. Have fun. And who wants the ball? <laughs> Here you go. Thank you.